Okay. All right. So I got my son Evan here helping film today. It's a little easier. I'm just um, Evan. If you just go over and just focus on the fuel pressure regulator. You don't have to zoom in or anything, but you can see it's about 30 pounds or something. I'll put the fuel pressure up by um, turning on the pump for a bit. So let me just turn on the pump. And it's at 43 and a half or 44. And uh, the problem I was having was that uh, uh, basically the... Uh, oh, you're, gonna, you're caught on that there. The problem I was having... The problem I was, I was having was that the, uh, all the fuel fittings, uh, the aluminum and fittings in particular, had to be retightened. And I guess when you first tighten the and fittings, um, and this was like several months ago when I put the pumps and the filters and everything in place, um, I guess the aluminum has uh, a little bit of compression to it. So you tighten them up and then the fittings loosen a little bit. I don't think that keeps going after months and months and months of use and tightening, but the first time you tighten them, I think you have to go over them again. So. I had two problems. I had a number of the end fittings needed to be retightened um, to avoid them from leaking. And another one is I had a leaky O-ring and um, basically I had to replace uh, one of the O-rings on the fuel injection rail and um, snagged everything up and then eventually after like several attempts got, got the fuel system to be leak free. And uh, you know, it's, our, it's still 41, 42 pounds and it's been off for a minute so it's, it's holding pressure nicely. Um, Evan, if you go around here, this side here, I uh, put the dash in place. Let me just go around the other side of the car. So I put the dash in place, as you can see, uh, because I'm working on the electrical system now. And uh, the same uh, two holes that I drilled uh, to, so just come underneath and have a look under here. The same two holes that I drilled to hold the um, uh, ECU, the, uh, the the computer, I ended up mounting a bracket, wel welding up a quarter or an eighth inch um, aluminum bracket here, the hinge at the bottom. And so this whole bracket assembly holds, this is just clear Lexan that's just got the protective film on it for now, but I have took the original cardboard which hides underneath here and I've shaped it out of quarter inch Lexan. That mounts to the um, stainless steel uh, piano hinge. And basically when I remove this assembly here, you know, that normally goes here, holds it all in together. When I remove the two holes that hold that bottom piece, then I'll be able to just flip this panel down. And this panel will mount all of my electrical distribution for all my new circuits. So I'll have fuse breakers, and solenoids and relays and I also have the um, I'm putting an amp in called the Kicker IQ 500.4 it's one of these state-of-the-art digital amps I'm picking it up on Tuesday in Seattle um, basically it's um, it's got all kinds of digital signal processing so it's got um, all of your electronic crossover points for bioamplification as well as EQ for adjusting um, you know the uh, the sound and, and it's, super deluxe in so many different ways and it allows you to do Bluetooth streaming of, so you don't actually have to have a head unit so I can find an old radio, an old Blowpunk original radio, leave it in the dash not have to make it look you know high tech at all um, and then have a hidden wireless streaming capability and also hands free uh, for the phone so that's going to be all hidden, be able to flip it down, have the amp here, have all my electro electrical electronic connections and I'm mounting uh, lithium ion battery in the trunk and I'm running one aught um, super flexible welding cables basically along the side under the carpet and then up into the distribution panels here so lightweight five pound racing battery in the back um, very heavy gauge uh, like thousand strand uh, wire running here to the front and then distribution here and I'm gonna avoid any actual keys in the car so I'm gonna have um, a wireless um, secure fob in my pocket that will disconnect the battery. So I'll just be able to connect the battery wirelessly, flick a switch that's going to be hidden in the ashtray to um, to enable the ignition, and then have a start button. So I won't use a key in the uh, in the steering column, and I will probably also not have um, keys in the door. I'll have um, a wireless. Um, uh, solenoid that will unlock and lock the car. Um, 
Not sure I can do that for the hatch at the back, probably not, so I'll probably still have to use a key uh, for the hatch, but that'll be the only thing, hopefully, that I'll have to use a key for. So, that's the progress. Lots of work to get, get all this stuff done, to get the fuel system finished this week. Now, I'm, I'm before I can actually get all the wiring finalized, I do need to start putting the dash in place, and I start to deal with interference fits and, uh, and roading issues. But um, this is the week where I, I basically do all the engine wiring and uh, get all the sensors mapped to the computer. So the, um, the last piece of news, I was going to use the race pack um, UDX uh, dash and I had this idea that I was going to be able to slip the original uh, dash in and out and just for show purposes and then be able to slip in this um, UDX dash. But it, a couple of things I didn't like about it, one it was monochrome, two all of the pixels or all of the symbols were all in fixed locations and were not um, programmable. I mean, yes, you had up to four or five screens, but you had some severe limitations in what you could do, how you could present data, and only certain things, there's only, I think, a total of 20 parameters that could, would come over from the, um, from the Holly uh, ECU. So Holly announced at, at uh, CES in November that they were going to have what's called the Holly Digital Dash that was compatible with the Dominator ECU and their other HP and Avenger CPUs and um, it's a seven and a half inch by, by four and a half inch color LCD touchscreen. It's meant for just presenting um, data and it's got the ability to import graphics to do complete custom dashboards, hundreds of parameters, arbitrary parameters, there's a bunch of pre-programmed uh, dash um, templates that they've got that look very European, very uh, Audi Volkswagen-ish with the black backgrounds and the red red and white, uh, red you know, red needles and white white lettering. So I'm going to be able to build in software, you know, as many screens as I need, plus it has what they call virtual switches. So I can get rid of all the mechanical switches for things like seat heaters and for seat heat temperature or anything like that. Um, and not have to mount physical switches. I can basically just literally have a page where all of my gauges, all of my switches show up and I can sit there and turn on or off a heat seater, decide what the temperature of the heat I want for the seat is and it'll set it all and the ECU can control all those parameters. Plus it allows you all of the playback of all of the, um, the data log for all of your runs. And finally it has a three axis accelerometer in it so I can do all of my performance measurements for braking, cornering, acceleration, power, calculations, all done uh, with the dash and the ECU with no external third-party stuff. So super happy with it. Um, the ability to get rid of, you know, having to use a late model uh, stereo and to have to deal with a monochrome display that's kind of ugly. Instead, go to a very, very high-tech um, dash display. Super, super interesting, and I'll be picking all that stuff up in the next week and, and be showing it to, uh, to everybody. Okay, thanks. You know, I think I've made a decision today that this rat's nest of original wiring is not going to go back in the car. Crazy as it sounds. Um, you know, my Holly EFI system, because I went with the Dominator, it has literally hundreds of user-definable inputs and outputs. And with the Holly Digital Dash, I can now do virtual switches. And I can do really crazy things, like I can have the left turn signal drive, a 50% duty cycle, you know, pulse, pulse width PWM output, pulse width modulated output. So basically, I can hook the lights up, so I can have the flashers and uh, the... Um, all the all the lights and everything can can all be controlled off of uh, off of the uh, um, digital dash. Where basically it's just a um, touchscreen display, user user definable switches and user definable signals and you know all indicators and all that stuff. So this is just a nightmare going through this and trying to decide what to keep and what to toss. Um, the vast majority of this has been replaced by the new ECU anyway. I thought I would just pick through this and pick the cables and the connectors that I want, but it's just so customized for the original car and everything's old and kind of fragile. And I'm thinking, I'm going to see if I can go without this 
and just go completely new. So um, maybe it's more work, but I don't think it is. I think it'll be a much cleaner installation. I've got the other setup pretty much bang on, perfect. So, so there. So as I pointed out, I'm building my own wiring system. I'm not going to use, I mean, the factory stuff. There's a few little bits that I'm keeping, but pretty much nothing else. By the way, before I get into the wiring, just these um, these connectors for the rear tail lights. Got a bunch of spares. Um, got some more rings that we're missing on mine. I guess I can always make new ones. But basically, um, the front turn signals on the American 81 to 84 cars or 80 to 84 cars, um, these things often break. So the plastic gets brittle. So anyway, I, I got some new ones. The old ones weren't in great shape. This one I'm going to have to um, just attach a new new wire here. But basically, um, um, should be good to go. Um, so what have I got here? So the way my system is going to work is I have Lithium Pros as the company that makes the lithium iron batteries. Uh, you know, Jigs and some of it, and these guys will sell them. Basically, it's a 12.8 volt, um, 20 amp hour, and lithium. You can go lower amp hour on lithium compared to a lead acid because of the um, basically the, uh, the the battery's got a much flatter discharge rate, so it'll hold its voltage until the bitter end, and then then drop off, and you can discharge it a lot further without damaging the battery, like. Um, Lead acid batteries, you have to be careful not to discharge them too far, or you can you can destroy the chemistry of the battery pretty quickly. End up buying a new battery. So, uh, you know, a small traditional Mark One Golf battery would be in the 30 amp hour range, and so 20 amp hour lithium is going to be comparable. And and I do, I don't you know necessarily need a ton of reserve capacity. Um, I only have a 65 amp lightweight race alternator, which is again fairly equivalent, um, probably a little bit smaller. You know, 80 amp, 90 amp would be uh, maybe more 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 typical of a Mark One, um, a later Mark One. But again, you know, I'm uh, I'm not looking for a bunch of reserve capacity and, and and high current use on things. So we'll see. I'm gonna have um, my battery is gonna go first. Then it's gonna go into um, a, a digital um, controlled, like a wireless control um, MOSFET switch. So it's gonna turn on and off battery to the whole car um, remotely wirelessly and then that will then go through a current shunt a very tiny homage current shunt you'll end up with less than 0.1 volt drop across it um, at full load and and that then runs through um, this uh, welding cable this is one aught cable um, so it's a thousand strands and um, this cutter here cuts it like butter so I've got 15 feet of, of red and black here. This is the Temco um, Industries. And then so that goes from the back of the car, from the wheel well where the um, lithium battery will be. And it's only going to be a 7-pound battery, so compare that to a 30-pound stock battery. Then positive and negatives run to the front, and, and I'm going to have an, um, the one aught comes into here, and then um, 8 aught can come out there, or you can go to 2 out or 4 out with the same connector here. So both negative and, and positive will go to these connectors. Then I'm going to run um, number 2 cable um, to the starter and um, also run the battery ground to the starter and then run the battery ground to the, um, you know, the transmission uh, block connector. So I'm not you know, I'm going to connect obviously to to the to the chassis of the car, but I'm going to act like a race car and pretend I don't have a ground in the car on the chassis, and I'm going to run ground cable. And then from the one on, I'm going to I'm going to, uh, like number two gauge. I'm also going to run number four gauge um, to things like um, the, the the stereo amp, and I, I'll show you that amp in a sec. But it's a uh, 1200 watt RMS, um, very very fancy uh, amplifier. Um, so there's lots of other things. I don't have everything I need. You know, this is classic, right? I, I do have the crimp connectors for the one aught number two and number four gauge. 
I do have the the, the wire wrap um, kits for um, or the shrink shrink wrap kits and fuses and battery connectors. And then up at the front, I'm going to have an ignition controlled um, 150 amp switch. So this this is my ignition switch. Basically, whenever you turn the ignition on, it's going to light up the solenoid and distribute. Uh, 12 volts to to these panels. I don't have all the panels here, but uh, typically the way these panels work is there's a positive and, and negative distribution, so I can run ground wires and the plus 12 wires of the different gauges I need to all the different accessories, um, and and so on. This is just uh, you know um, for 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 plus or, or or ground distribution as well. And then what I've got here is you know an assortment of wires. So I start off with 20 gauge go to 18 gauge, go to 14, go to 12, go to 10 gauge. So, and then from 10 to 4 to 2 to, to 1 aught. And then a bunch of the, um, the really high quality, um, the, 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 the wrap. This is, you can open it up and then put the wires in and it self closes on the wires. Keep everything looking fancy. And then of course on the computer side of it I've got all of the um, you know, small wiring to do with the metro pack and the weather pack connectors to all the sensors and to everything. Um, so I'll show you the amp now. So this is the um, five channel power amp. Basically um, there is a, a subwoofer control that you mount, to, you know, under the dash that this is very, all digital so you can control the amount of boost and gain and the frequency and the bandwidth and all this stuff from this thing here. This is controlled through Bluetooth and through um, um, a USB port if you want. And uh, so I have the uh, four outputs to the two woofers and the two tweeters and then the subwoofer output. Um, again, a total of uh, over 1200 watts RMS. Crazy. But um, it's a beautiful amp because you can, as I say, program it over Bluetooth, determine your crossover frequencies, determine your slope of your crossovers, determine your gain, the digital delays to each of the speakers, and so on and so forth. And um, so a really, really nice um, setup. So I'll be able to run all the equalization on it. It's got uh, built-in, uh, you know, 30-band um, and parametric EQs. So you can just tune the crap out of your system until it's flawless. So... That's the amp, and uh, takes 100 amps of um, of power um, uh, for a circuit to go to it. So I'm using a 100 amp circuit breaker rather than a, a fuse, so I can reset it if it ever pops. And the other thing is, you know, it, it takes time to go through and 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 get um, everything you need to wire the car. So I'm being slowed down a little bit because I've got, um, you know, you can't run a wire through the firewall without running it through the gasket first. Right, the gasket's got to be there. You can't put the gasket in after. I mean, you shouldn't. You cut the gasket and put it in, but it's better to have the gasket and then pull the wires through the gasket. And so I don't have all the gaskets, so it's going to take me a little longer to wire this than I I thought it was going to. But uh, I'm making progress.